on this computer. There we go. <laughs> so at least now we're recording at the good part. All right. So everybody should have a little cellophane sheet or envelope like this. And it also has in the front something that looks like a business card, but it really is a refrigerator magnet. So it's a little gift from us to you. And uh, you should also have inside that envelope your reference image, which today is the cardinal, the Christmas cardinal. And then you should have some tracing paper with the cardinal image there. And then you should have some carbon paper. So carbon paper, carbon paper is shiny on one side and dull on the other side. What we want is to use the shiny side. The shiny side goes down on your paper. It has to go down. If it doesn't go down, when you trace on top of it, nothing will be on your canvas. You will have done a lot of work for absolutely nothing. Okay? We don't want that. So make sure you have the shiny side down. Next, we're going to have um, one or two glasses of water, one for light colors and one for dark colors, so you can keep your water kind of clean as you go along. And then, of course, you should have some Studio 928 fancy student brushes to paint with tonight. You should have a number 14 brush and a number 12 brush. And I'm going to show you how to use those in just a little bit. Uh, you should also have your palette knife and uh, two palette trays that we're going to mix paint on, a uh, pen or a pencil so we can do the tracing. And what else am I forgetting, Shelby? Anything? Did I introduce you? We have Shelby over here. She's our trivia. <laughs> She's our trivia person. She's going to regale us with, you know, questions throughout the evening and um, also help us if we have any technical difficulties as we move along. Speaking Hello. of technical difficulties. I, speaking yes. of technical difficulties, we cannot see you, can just hear you on my side. Okay, so let's see. What do you need to do? Um, you need to turn you should probably let's see the t oh the talking button okay so if you're looking at your screen right now it should be a little uh, bar that says talking so if you talk you'll see it say something oh yeah hold on and then click on that and it should show a minus sign and then two rectangles and then four rectangles and then eight rectangles and if you click on eight rectangles you should see everybody it's saying your video is off are you cheryl vargas uh yes i am but that video is not the video that you should be seeing two screens is everybody seeing two screens yeah yes yeah okay oh okay must be us then all right we'll keep going then yeah um the only thing i can suggest is are you seeing anybody we see everybody else but you. That's interesting. <laughs> Never had that one. Have, oh, um, you don't see. You have it on full. Do you have it on full screen? Yeah, we'll come off. You come off full screen. It separates the the boxes from the actual presentation. Right. Right. We're probably the presentation is sitting behind your screen of people. So you want to go over to the right hand side of that screen of people and lift it up. All set, thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> Together we are better. All right, so um, yeah, let's get started with uh, tracing. Did we went over all the supplies and everything. Got Sh Shelby introduced, see, she'd have done that earlier. <laughs> you could have joined us a little earlier. Okay, so um, what you need right now is your tracing paper and or sorry your carbon paper and your tracing paper and then let's just take a look at our image that we're painting tonight so i went to a photography site and i saw some birds and i always loved the cardinal i was i think it's like my spirit bird or something and i said i wanted to do this so um i painted it from that and so we're gonna first draw the outline of this box that's the first thing we're gonna do okay and once we do that, we can either leave this completely white or we'll just fill in this area here on the background and then we'll fill in the, the bird after that, okay? So let's line up our tracing paper, I'm sorry, our carbon paper. Let's start on the right-hand side of the page. 
of the car of the canvas, I mean. And let's line up our bird, the edge of that paper with the carbon paper. Okay, so remember, shiny side down. So I'm lifting up one edge and I see it's shiny, so that we want that side facing the canvas. Oh, I'm facing mine the wrong way. All right, fine. <laughs> You could face yours the other way if you want to. <laughs> Shelby just doesn't want me to paint that way. So I'm like, okay, fine, <laughs> fine. All right, so, and we're gonna freehand this, okay? So don't even worry about this line right here. Don't worry about it. Don't trace it. We're only gonna trace three lines. It's just that when we're in the computer, we can't make a, a rectangle with three sides. So uh, let's line this up with the edge of the canvas. And let's just start right here at this line behind this little crown and just drag your pin across. You can keep going all the way. And then hold your paper down with one hand and then start the second line. Same thing here. Now, if you want to get a ruler or something, because that's easier for you, you can do that. Or use the straight edge of your reference image. But either way, it's just kind of like a guide. It doesn't have to be perfectly straight. And I just did this to add another level of interest to the painting. You really don't even need the box. <laughs> it's up to you. All right. So we're I'm, supposed I'm to get that hands. tracing pen in our packet. No, there isn't a pen. Oh, just use any pen you want. Any pen that you want. Yes, any pen or okay. any pencil. Sure. You probably said that and I didn't hear you. <laughs> That's okay. That's okay. We're right there with you. I think. I'm a man. I don't follow directions, so. <laughs> it's <dead> fine. <laughs> You know what, let's go ahead before moving our hands, let's just go ahead and do our birds and then we'll do our, our branches out here last. How about that? Okay, so we've traced the three lines here, this line on the top, this line on the side, and then we're doing this line on the bottom. We're not worrying about this one. We want that to be a little willy nilly over there just to add some interest. So everybody's painting when we get down a little, a little different and that's what we want, okay, we don't want like um, little duplicate people <laughs> running around. All right, so now I'm gonna go in and start on my bird. Gonna just follow that little crown that he's wearing. And we're just gonna do the bird. Don't even worry about the branches. Just draw right over that branch. And then just follow the wing up, draw right over that branch. And then go underneath. And then I'm coming back down to the tail. And just take your time. You're not pressing too hard. You're just trying to make sure that there's like a little bit of a guideline underneath for you. Because we're not going to see these lines. We really don't want to see them when we're done. We're going to cover those up with paint anyway. So if they're a little crooked, it's fine. It's fine if they're crooked. Don't worry about perfection right now. Just enjoy the process. Do the task for the task sake. And so now I'm making this little mask. I love that they wear like a little black mask around their face. <laughs> I think they're like the mean bird. Aren't they the mean bird? No. Angry birds. You know, Jackie and I are from St. Louis, so we're happy to have the Cardinal as our thing. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> but wait a minute. So the angry birds, they're red, aren't they? I thought mm -hmm. I heard that the, the, the Cardinals go around attacking other birds. Or is it the Blue Jay? That's Yeah, I like them both, though. I love them. I love them. They're just little birds. They don't know any better. Give them a break. <laughs> All right. So let's. So if you want to check what you did, just keep one hand down, okay, and make sure you draw this little reflector line in here because I want you to understand that this has to be round. It has to be round. As long as it's round, it'll look realistic when we're done. 
Let's go ahead and pick up one corner and check and see if you put the shiny side down. <laughs> Did you put the shiny side down? <laughs> All right. Okay. Well, good. I'm taking mine off because I kept my shiny side down, so I'm, I'm safe. And I'm just going to put this to the side because we're going to use this again, right? So that's kind of what you should have. And I say stop and take a sip right now. You know? Got that one little step out of the way. And let's have our first trivia question. All right. So let's see, we got some color. All right, do you guys have green and do you have blue and do you have yellow? Yes. Yes, you have all those colors? Oh no. Not green. Oh, okay. You have blue and yellow. <laughs> okay, because that's what I want you to have. Because the blue and the yellow together makes a more beautiful uh, green than the green that they manufacture. So we're going to make our own green. And the question is, which country started the tradition of putting up a Christmas tree? Was it England, Switzerland, Germany, or Austria? Which country started all this? Commercialism. <laughs> it's too late. All right, so I'm going to go, and the first thing I'm going to do is, oh, I want to remind you guys, just keep your reference in uh, image close by, okay? So the reason for that is because you always should do art kind of with a reference. You know, in the old days, the masters would go out to the fields and actually paint from realism, you know? So since uh, we're painting something that is... Uh, you know, we're trying to kind of copy. We want to use that reference image right in front of us so that we remember what we're doing, we're trying to accomplish. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to go ahead. I put some yellow down, and it's Germany. The answer is Germany. Do we have any guesses? Oh, okay. Switzerland. Okay. And next, we're going to pick up some blue. But remember, so throughout this, I want you just to remember that when we, when we mix pinks, we also always put the secondary color next to the color, never directly into the color that we're mixing. That's how you mix colors. Never add one color directly into another, okay? So, uh, <laughs> yeah, we're going to mix some green. Now, the green that we have here is kind of blotchy. This is kind of a, a watercolor representation of this piece. We're going to do it in, in acrylic, so it's going to be a little different, but not much. So I'm going to pick up uh, some of the yellow by itself. See, you can already see, just picking up a little yellow with the blue left on my palette knife, I've already got green. See that? All right, so I'm going to pick up a little more because we'll probably need a little bit more than that. And then I'm going to add a little more blue to it to give it a deeper tone. And then I have enough, I think, to paint my whole area there. And then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start building my secondary color. So that color has more sky in it, okay? So there's more blue and white going on over here on this side of the background. So the green in, that we just mixed and the yellow will be for this side. And then we'll do some blue and white on the other side. So go ahead and wipe off your palette knife if you've already mixed your green. Thank you. And then let's start with a little white on the other side of the tray. Just this one. Thank you. Okay, so now I'm going to add a little phthalo blue to that white. I'm actually going to divide this in half because I don't need that much. And I'm just going to add about two parts to this, uh, like five parts blue here. Just going to put it together. So this, and I'm not mixing it like to a solid color. There's streaks of white in there. You leave it just like that, right? So let's see, what should we start? I think we should work from this side to this side, right? So the only rule that we have, okay, is try not to get too much color on the bird. Uh, it just makes it that we have to put another coat, which is not a bad thing. We always have to put another coat with acrylics. But I'm just giving you your where your lines can go willy-nilly. You can go crazy over here 
and then just try to keep your straight line here. And we're gonna start with the lighter color and move to the left. So we're gonna start with the lighter color we just blended. And, but here, first, I think we'll wet, we'll wet the canvas. So take your number 14 brush. Okay, so dip it in the water like this. We want it like a chisel on the end when we're done. Okay, it should look really sharp on the end. And then just take that brush without any paint. And we're just gonna fill in this area right here with water. Okay, just follow that so that you feel a little more comfortable getting used to the brush. Just lay some water down. You can do that for, see? And then when you're brushing with this brush, you wanna use the flat side to cover the most area. And you can use the tip of the brush for those straight edges you wanna get, okay? And the reason why we do this in the shape of the bird is because the paint will gravitate to the water as opposed to the dry area. So just go ahead and you can actually go all the way out to the edge of the canvas with that. And now we're gonna have some fun and put some color in there. So we're gonna take this number 12, or I'm sorry, this number 14 brush and add some more water to it. Okay, my brush is a little wet because I want my paint to be like the consistency of ink and not paste, right? So I'm pushing this color into my brush on both sides. That's a little white. And actually, I think I'll pick up a little white too, okay? Because we want to get some of this splotchiness going on here. So just kind of, we're just going to kind of dab some color around. Just dab it in. Just dab it in. Because this is the sky behind him, right? You're creating the sky. These are your clouds, and this is the wind, and all this stuff. Just kind of lay your brush down and not too thick. Leave some white in between. And then just follow all the way down. And then you can stop. And actually, I should have left some more holes in there, but it's fine. It's fine. It's okay. It's whatever you want. It's whatever I want, right? Don't judge it. All right. And then I even went out a little bit here, so it's just dab, dab, dab. And actually, now I'm going to go and pick up a little bit of that green that I just made, just a tiny bit on the edge of my brush. Take a stop and take a look at how much paint I'm putting. Not much, right? You can still see the blue. So I'm going to take that and just kind of go around the edges a little bit here. I'm going to mix that in again. Because these are like, this is where some tree branches kind of are. And you can round these out so they're not like uh, straight lines. You want to round those out. And maybe a little bit up here too. Because the trees are up here. Okay, let's have a trivia question. I get in the zone and I forget I'm having a party here. <laughs> it may be just be me, but I'm having trouble keeping up with you. I don't know if anybody else is having trouble, but uh, if, if nobody else is, you keep going at speed because I don't want to slow you down. But Well, did you have a question? Can I help you? No, I don't have a question. I just, like, I'm on my blue painting in here and you're doing green, so. Well, you'll catch up. We won't All right, move away we'll keep from going. We won't right. take away from you. I promise. If you so you as long as you have your green already um, added or mixed, then all you're doing is adding it in the same way you added your blue. Got it. I'm all, I'm caught up. Okay. Not really, but it's okay. <laughs> it all works out. Trust me. Trust me. Famous last words, he says. All right. So the next thing we're going to do is just add, do the same thing again with the wetting the canvas, because that helps our paint glide on a little bit better. And we have a trivia question. What was the first company to use Santa Claus in their advertising? Was it Microsoft, Ford Motor Company, Coca-Cola, or Nike? 
Coca-Cola? Got a Coca-Cola guess? Yes. Yes, Coca-Cola. Let's see. Coca-Cola. Good job. <laughs> I would have thought Ford Motor Company because they've been around longer, but okay. All right. So, um, oops, I missed my brush. Shoot. Let me get up my brush. All right. I'm just going to have to use another brush. All right. So, I'm going to go in and wet my canvas on the other side to just look kind of like sky on the other side. And just kind of lay that water in. It should just be wet, not um, like pools of water. So if you have a little bit too much water, it's okay. You can just dab it off with a paper towel. We just want to moisten it so we can help the paint to kind of move around. Like that earlier. Oh well, it is what it is. And just follow that around. Who painted the ceiling at the Sistine Chapel? Was it Da Vinci, Van Gogh, Michelangelo, or Picasso? Michael Angelo. Michelangelo. Uh huh. Yeah. That sounded like a little person that answered that. <laughs> <laughs> Good job. Okay, so I wetted um, this area too. Now we're gonna put that number 14 brush to work. So again, we make our brush so it's like a chisel. And then we're just gonna tap some cover color in along the edge. I mean, it's too green, but. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, mine. <laughs> it could be greener. It could be whatever green you want. Actually, as you can see here, I'm going back and picking up some more blue because I think it looks great because when you're against that line there, look. So if your green is like that, you're good. Okay, so I would just kind of go through and like that and kind of tap that color in. And then you can come out and start you know, laying it out there. I'm going to smush that. <laughs> I'm just going to smush this. Um, that's how we get that little watercolor look. Same thing here. Now I can go back in. Now, if you your green was dark like this, then go back and pick up some yellow and just kind of push it in there. Okay, so you can't mess this up. This is, add a little bit more water so it kind of flows, you know, so the, the paint kind of moves on its own around the canvas. Because you're really just painting on kind of like fabric. The canvas is made from linen or something similar to it. I'm sure it's not pure linen. And then you just kind of push some water and to make the, kind of, the paint kind of flow. Just add a little bit more water on the tip of your brush. Just kind of see if you can get those colors to get familiar with each other. I'm actually going to go back and pick up some of that blue that I mixed before. I'm going to put it closer to his body. Just a little bit. Just a hint. Can you see? where I added it. I just picked up some of the blue I used over here and dabbed it in close to his body. So just take your time and you, you know, this is your background. It doesn't have to look any particular way. So we're imagining that we're zoomed in on this actual photograph of this bird, right? But the background is kind of faded. You know, it's kind of, what do they call that when you blur the background? You get that setting on your Samsung phone. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, it's like the background is a blur. You can't really see it, but you know it's trees, you know, and it's, it's very blurry. So don't worry about 
it being accurate or painting it like it looks like, you know, just go willy nilly with it. That's this is willy nilly afternoon. Have fun with your painting. And if I paint this a million times, it's never going to look the same. So there's no right and there's no wrong. Oh, trivia question. I did it again. I zoomed out. Um, which bone are babies born without? Okay. <laughs> Shoulder blade. Shoulder blade. Kneecap. Ribs. Collarbone. I don't even know. Me either. <laughs> this is a kneecaps. new one on me. Kneecaps? Yes. Wow. Kneecap? That's know. crazy, huh? That is crazy. Kneecaps, that was one guess, was it? I'm gonna go shoulder yeah. blade. Kneecaps. All right. Really? <laughs> well, I guess you don't really need them when you're just laying around all the time. <laughs> oh, wow. Wow. That's so interesting. How I did I never know that? We learn a little bit here at Studio 9282. All right. So I'm going to go and just kind of blur this in. So yeah, mix your greens to your heart's content. There are a million greens behind this bird. No green is wrong and no green is right. So just go for it and then just kind of blend it all together. Whatever your strokes are, your strokes are good. All right. <laughs> Which country invented tea? Was it Japan, China, Canada? I'm sorry, <laughs> Japan, China, India, or Pakistan? Which country invented tea? China. Yeah, um, China, guess. I think China. Yeah, I think China. China. China, good job, good job. Okay, so now our next color is of course red. Let's go ahead and get that red down. Then we'll come back later and put the branches in. So take your other palette tray because let's leave this green palette over there. We'll use that later. And right now we're gonna pick up a red palette. So grab your palette knife, don't worry. If you need anything explained again, that's what I'm here for. So I don't have a problem with stopping what I'm doing and just mixing colors over for you. So don't feel bad if you need to ask. All right, so I'm putting down some red right now. This is a lovely velvet tea red. And we're also gonna clean up that palette and I can pick up some black. So I don't happen to have any. I have to reach down here and get some. Okay, got it. All right, so we're gonna take that black, and again, we always put the color to the side, right? Right, so next thing is we're gonna go ahead and pick up, we're gonna mix two colors. One is gonna be the color that we use um, to paint our bird, and the other one is gonna be the shadow of that color. So let's divide this red in half. So take a look. Stop what you're doing for a second. Take a look at the blending of the colors. So we're going to take um, this palette and uh, create two piles of red. One right there, one right there. Okay, so one of us is going to be our like highlight color and the other one is going to be our shadow. But before we do that, we're going to add a little white onto the palette as well. Okay. So I'm going to put my white over here because I don't want it anywhere near my other colors. Um, so I'm going to divide this in half again. And I'm going to mix some white into it. Just a little bit. I don't want pink. I just want a color that's different from the original color, a shade lighter. And to do that, I add just a shade of white. <laughs> Okay, so now I'm going to create my shadow color. So I'm going to pull half of that 
away. And I'm going to take, watch how much black I add. Because if you don't watch this, then you'll put too much black and you'll have another color. It won't be the color we're trying to mix, okay? So I'm just going to touch the tip of my uh, palette knife into the black. So that's a very small amount of black. And I'm using this to create the shadow, the darker color that exists on my bird. So now I have three shades of red. The original shade, the, the lightened hue of red, which we have a trivia question about red colors. Um, and yeah, so we're going to start with our lighter red, right? So go ahead and pick up your number. Uh, well, let's let's do the let's do the number twelve brush first. So that's your round brush. So you dip your water into the container, your brush into the container, and you shake it around like the hokey pokey, you know. Then you tap off the edge, or you tap off the excess water on the edge, and then you kind of roll it on your um, palette so that you get a point. So the point on the number 12 brush is how you make um, fine lines. So that's the first thing we're going to do. We might as well just jump in it. Um, but wait, I need to check in with you. So I'm going to ask everybody, um, do their, are your backgrounds still wet? And can you hold up your painting? Mine doesn't look <laughs> Your painting is going to be fine. Don't worry about it. Yeah, I'm seeing some good stuff. Yeah, all right. Good job, good job. All right, so the next step that we have to do, oh, you guys are too cute with the red hat. Oh my God, you guys, hi. Oh, <laughs> very nice. Okay, good job, good job. Okay, so I am going to dry my um, bird because if I try to do some of the other things we need to do, it's going to be a hot mess. We don't want that. So I'm going to mute myself for a few minutes and you guys can go ahead and mute yourselves too and just blow dry your surface. So if you're right here, this is where you should be. The reason we're blow drying is because now we're going to make some strokes into areas that may be wet and we don't want to, you know, corrupt the painting, right? Oh, I forgot a corner over here. Did you guys get your little corner? <laughs> I got to go back and get my corner. All right, I'm going to fill that in real quick. I think I'll pick up the blue and put in there with it too. All right, okay. All right, I'm leaving you for just a minute. Be right back.
Oh. No wine for you today? Come on, it's Friday. Oh. <laughs> well, I don't want to twist Friday. your arm. No, I don't. Sounds good. Okay. <laughs> hey, I'm sorry. We're over here. Try it's Friday. We're like, let's have a glass of wine. It's five o'clock somewhere. Uh, well, it's five o'clock where you guys are, right? You're on the East Coast. Yes. Yeah, there you go. See? <laughs> so cheers and happy new year. Wait, we'll come back on, on camera and have a little cheer with you guys. <laughs> cheers and, and have a wonderful <laughs> holiday. <laughs> All right. All right, so that's all dry now. So the next step, we're gonna get these um, rinsed off. And I've got my number 12 brush here all ready to go. And the first color we're gonna go with is our lightest color. So I'm laying my paintbrush down and what we do with this brush is you gotta keep twirling it and kind of Keep it at a 45 degree angle while you're doing that to keep the tip intact. Keep the point there, okay? So then you want to touch it to a paper towel to make sure it's not uh, running, you know, so the paper towel can drink out the excess water. Now what we're going to do is we're going to make these little uh, lines. And this is uh, what this brush will do. So if you hold it at a 45 degree angle and just tap the tip of it, you get a very thin line. This is what we're going for. Uh, can you see that okay? Mm -hmm. And then when we're doing his crown, we're gonna be doing this. So just start at the center, like towards the center of his head, and we're gonna flick out. That's what we're trying to accomplish right now, right? So I'm gonna turn my canvas upside down so I can get a good angle. And I'm gonna make my first little ticks out here. I'm gonna start inside of his head and then I'm gonna push out like that, okay? So you have all this room to get to the edge. All right, and then we're just gonna keep going like that. So we have a little bit of a more realistic kind of a crown, and then we'll just go in and fill in this area with our brush. And we can make them a little bit more pointed. It's kind of like guidelines, you know? So if I got a little rogue with his, <laughs> I got a little rogue with his uh, crown. And just use a light stroke on your brush. And then I'm just using the edge of the brush to follow along that crown area, okay. So what is the biggest grossing Christmas movie of all time? Is it Home Alone, uh, Polar Express, Elf, or Bad Santa? Which one is the highest grossing movie of all time? Home Alone. Home Alone. Yeah, Home Alone. Is, uh, good yeah. Anyone else? Any yeah. guesses? And the answer is, ding, 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 ding. Home alone. Home alone. All right. So you can finish the bird. We're going on the side of the bird now. You can finish the bird with um, your number 12 brush or your number 14 brush, whichever one you feel comfortable with. So with the number 14, you can use the straight edge to help you lift like the area down the wing. It just makes a wonderful straight line on its own. Then you just kind of turn that canvas around and you line that brush up with the edge just like this and you just drag it down the other. So it's more kind of mechanical. You're just kind of pivoting your wrist. And, and you're covering the area at the same time. And then just fill that in. And then same thing along the top. Let 
with the floor comes back. And if you're not um, covering the area completely, it means maybe you just need to add a little bit more pigment to your brush or a little more water to help with the fluidity. The unicorn is the national, what? Animal of which country? <laughs> Mongolia, Lithuania, Scotland, or Chile? The unicorn is the national animal of which country? <laughs> okay. No guesses? Nobody wants to tackle this one? Scotland. And the answer is Scotland. Yeah. Good job, I thought, lady. I thought it was that flower. Yeah. Oh, but they have national animal. Yeah. National animal. Wow. That's that's interesting. All right. So um, I went to my secondary color, the one that I added black to. And I'm going to load up my number 14 brush. And I'm going to go along his little tummy area here with that. See how that brush just makes that line for you. All you have to do is just stay on this side of the line. And take it real slow. Nice and slow and just, God, you just can relax right into that stroke. It's just very calming. <laughs> when, what, or when was the very first model of the iPhone released? Was it 2003, 2005, 2007, or 2009? 2005. You say that, you say that with some conviction. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure, but I think it's right. Okay, so I'm going to continue with this darker color, but I'm feeling like it's not quite dark enough. So I'm going to fix that. I'm going to show you how I fix it. So these two colors should contrast. So you can kind of tell which is the wing and which is the tummy area. So I will show you how to do that in just a minute. So yeah, 2007? Really? Oh, wow. Wow. Huh. You know, they feel like they've been around forever. <laughs> so if you find that you get some streaks in your painting, you know, from your brush, don't worry about it because um, acrylic, the nature of acrylic paint is that you always have to do more than one coat. So on your second coat, when you're giving your second coat to your piece, and you know, artists work on pieces for weeks, months, um, you, you focus on that second uh, coat on your brush strokes. So don't worry about what you're seeing right now. You're just laying down foundation really. So that gives you permission to go, oh, well, I'm going to make that look better. So I'm not worried about how it looks right now, right? So you just can relax more into the actual painting, not worry so much about the outcome at this point, because the outcome is going to be wonderful. <laughs> Who wrote the best-selling Christmas song? Nat King Cole, Bing Crosby, Mariah Carey, or Otis Redding? Who wrote the Mariah most Carey? Best-selling Christmas song, Mariah Carey. Bing Crosby. Bing Crosby. I think it's Mariah. Carey said. Mm -hmm. And the answer is Bing Crosby's White Christmas. <laughs> well, his song has been around for quite a <laughs> long time. <laughs> <laughs> But we love all the Christmas tunes. All right, so I got his little tummy in there. Got his tummy all done. 
But I want to go back again and give this another coat. I want it, I want my red to be more vibrant. So definitely going to do that. And then we're going to put some shadows in um, before we go to our um, beak area. So uh, yeah, because that's going to be the yeah that layer, and then we'll come back and we'll do our branches. So for now, I'm gonna what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the red that's already on my brush and dip some dip the brush in water. So I'm, I'm working with my deepest red right now. And I'm just gonna take the corner of my brush and pick up a little black, okay? And I'm mixing it into my red. Yes, it looks darker now, but it's gonna become the shadow under the wing. So now it looks more like, a, I don't know, kind of like a royal red kind of little bit purple, All right? So we want to turn that number 14 brush back into a chisel again, right? So we're working that paint in so we get the consistency of ink. And, you know, you're always holding your brush kind of at a 45 degree angle so you can ensure that the brush keeps its shape. And so there's my chisel. It's ready to go to work. So we're going to take this chisel, and I might have a little bit too much paint, so I'm going to go back and make sure no paint accidentally drips off my brush, you know? So I wiped it off on the side, and now I'm going to take that chisel and lay it against this line underneath his wing and just pull in this direction. And actually, I'm feeling like now I want to dry this because it's not letting me put it down the way I want. I'm going to dry this and then put my shadow in. But I guess I could do it like this. So if you lay your brush down like this, you can, you can get it. No, I should just, yeah, I'm going to dry it again. So to put your shadow in, just, um, can you pull out a little bit, mm -hmm. Shelly? Mm -hmm. Thank you. We'll, um, I'm going to dry this little area and then I can put another coat of red so we can have a more vibrant um, red on the wing there. So I'm going to mute you for just a second. We're going to get you a trivia question and I will be right back. This picture doesn't look like that. <laughs> Okay, I'm back. Okay, which Jewish dish is made to celebrate a miracle of oil? Is it matzah ball soup, chala, kugel, or latkes? Did I say that right? Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Which one is made to celebrate the miracle of oil? Matzo ball soup, chala, kugel, or latkes? Okay. <laughs> Come on now, just take a stab at it. One of them's got to be right, right? I'm going to say chala. Oh, it's called chala? Oh, yeah, I'm not saying all that. <laughs> <laughs> Show me, says, you have to say challah in his head in it when you say it, so. Lot keys, uh -huh. you steered me down the wrong path. Lot keys. All right. Hey. Yes. Cameron. Oh, okay. 
one for us. All right, so now that I've got that all dried off, I am going to go back in and try to get that shadow going. But I think it is kind of working already. Can you see how it looks like a little shadowy under the ring right there? Okay, so um, hey, I'm going to go ahead and stop. ignore that. All the way down, just kind of. And then just kind of stop right there under the tail. This is our shadow color. Not too dark. You can test it out. And we're saving the black part for last. But you know what? Um, it's good to put down a layer of it. Let's go ahead and put a layer down because it'll probably take a couple layers to get that deep, intense black. Maybe we'll add a little red to it. I think we'll do that. All right. So let's. Start with the black, and I'm going to take my palette knife and add just a drop of red to it. Okay, I'm going to add a little drop of red. So it's still 100% black, but with like about 3% red. It just changes it up a little bit and maybe helps it uh, with the intensity. All right, so I am going to use my number 12 brush, which can we use this? Oh, just for the, the crown thing. Um, so just twirl your paintbrush back into a point and go in and pick up some of the color you created. And to get into small areas, you use just the tip of the brush. <clears throat> and again, make sure it's a nice consistency, like ink. And we'll go around and just tap in the color, just touch it. Don't try to lay down the entire brush because the entire brush is not gonna fit in that little space. So we're just using the very tip of the brush. And then to make sure you're not dripping, see how I drip right there? Can you zoom in on that, Shelby? Mm -hmm. So if you see how I got water beading up right there, that means I didn't complete the mixing of my color before I put it on my canvas. So. Um, and I also didn't check by touching my paintbrush to the side of the paper towel, let the paper towel drink out the excess uh, water. You don't want that to drip on your painting. But anyway, it's a small mistake, but it's not nice to know how to fix it. And then just tap it in, tap it in. Nice and slow, just the tip of the brush. Just using the last two hairs on the tip of this brush. Especially when we get down to these little tiny areas, we're just tapping. Hardly any pressure at all you're putting on this brush. And then you should be able to, you know, stay in the lines and, and uh, finish the, the piece. Which animal produces its own suntan lotion? Is it the Komodo dragon, the hippopotamus, the elephant or the alligator? Which animal produces its own suntan lotion? Okay, don't worry. <laughs> <Quiet. laughs> elephant. Make one guess. Hippopotamus. Oh. Hippopotamus. I know you didn't know all these, uh, you know, <laughs> life altering <laughs> facts. <laughs> ah, things you need to know in life. Mm -hmm. And the answer is hippopotamus. Hippopotamus. So, yeah, you guys, you get around this eye area and just don't press down with the whole brush. Just the tip, like barely touch it, and then you'll be able to fit into these areas. And in case you didn't know, there is a way to erase paint if you make a mistake. Anybody want me to go over that? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So if you make a mistake, Let's say, um, all right, I'm gonna, I hate to use red because red, <laughs> red will stain the canvas. Uh, let's, uh, well, let's use wet. Let's use red. What the heck? All right, let's say I'm painting 
them over here because I got to do this anyway, right? And let's just say, let's say I don't like that line. I don't like this last line I put here. I don't like this one. So what you do is you rinse out your brush really well. And you got to have clean water. doesn't work without clean water. And um, let's see if I got a clean brush here. Yes, I have a clean brush. And now I'm dabbing off. Let's see, are you on my paper towel, Shelby? Okay, so right here. So I'm dabbing off the excess water. I'll just dip it again because you didn't see all that. But I'm letting the paper towel drink out the excess, but there's still water in my brush. And I'm going to erase like this. I swipe and then I wipe. Swipe and wipe. Swipe. Hey, um, Kaylin, can you come here for a second, please? Did you see that? Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All righty then. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, add another coat of red over here on this other side of my bird. And this time I'm just picking up a normal uh, red with just a little of the previous darker red in, but mostly pure red. And I'm using that 14 brush again. Now this time it's going to really cover because you've already got an already dry coat of paint down. And just use a really light stroke. Don't press down too hard. And use the flat side of the brush. Okay. The flat side. Just lay that brush down and let the brush do the work. Turquoise is the birthstone for which month? Is it January, May, September, or December? Turquoise is May. the birthstone. We have a May. Who said that? Gary? Uh, no. Is it December? I thought it was, is it May? I don't know. Is it December? It's not May. It's not September. It's not, okay, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I guess you got told. <laughs> Too funny. Okay, what is it now? January. January. Oh, hey, hey. Hey, you're wrong. What is it? Oh, it's December. All right. So, yeah, so I'm laying my brush flat down so I get some nice. Now my brush strokes kind of count, so I want them to be long. You want long brush strokes. Angle your brush so that it's laying on its side when you're painting these wings, okay? You want to make long strokes. And nice and slow, nobody's in a hurry. Right. All right. I think I want to add a, oh, let's go ahead and uh, dry and then we can add extra coats later. All right. We'll put our branches on next. How you got vermilion <laughs> is a shade of which color? Blue, green, purple, or red? Vermilion is a shade of which color? Red. Well, she knew that right away, Miss Kelly. No, is it blue? <laughs> it's red. <laughs> it's red. <laughs> okay, I'm going to click off one more time. Uh, yeah. And then I'm going to dry this and I'm going to do my print. My little paint looks a mess. Oh, artistic freedom.
not looking too bad. <laughs> I, I love painting this painting. All right, so you guys, um, the next thing, oh, what did I just touch this and make a mark? Oh, I guess that's where my branches are going. Uh, <laughs> I probably could erase it, but I'm gonna just think it's gonna be okay. It's gonna be fine. All right, so now once I have my image all dry here, I'm going to, let's get those branches on. And um, yeah, if you went ahead and painted your beak, that's fine, because it's probably going to need two coats of yellow. Um, you might start with white um, as your base coat and then put the yellow on top of that. Um, but that's entirely up to you. All right, so I'm lined up. What I'm doing is just lining up my previous lines, you know, my little square that I have going. And I'm going to just slip in my um, carbon paper underneath like so and we're going to draw some berries and some branches and have some fun with this all right so uh, let me get my pen and make sure you got the shiny side down shiny side down shiny side down <laughs> oh don't make that mistake shiny side down all right and uh then just kind of follow these lines and that's it that's, it. that's all they don't have to be perfect. They just have to be like branches, which are not perfect. So don't worry about it. And then we have our berries. I wonder what kind of berries these things are. Because I always see they're always in trees that have these. Is that just the evergreen tree? Because I know um, by my son, son's house, he has uh, evergreen. And they have those little red holly berries. I was like, oh, they're so pretty. We got some really good pictures of them. And yeah, I'm just overlapping now. This is going to really come into play. You're going to be like, oh, I did that. You will be pleased. And then just keep, you know, one hand down on one side and make sure your paper doesn't move around. And now I'm holding, I'm moving to this other side and I'm holding with the other hand, right? If you happen to move your paper, okay, don't panic. Just start, pull out the carbon paper, line everything that you just did up, line all that up, okay? Line it up and slip your carbon paper back under there. Bam, you're back in business. Okay. So I got all that and I'm going to get the claws. Don't forget the claws. And you guys are actually the first persons or first persons, the first people painting this image with, with us. We're going to be painting it again. And uh, I just moved my carbon paper. We're going to be painting it uh, next week. Um, so we're excited about that in watercolor. So that would be fun. And we're also doing a free watercolor demo on a Sunday. So if you want to stop by, we're going to do a mold wine recipe. Uh, a, a wine distributor is doing it with us. And then, uh, yeah, we're having a free download of the recipe and uh, the watercolor demo. So if you're not doing anything and you find that you do like to create, you should stop on by. And we're giving away free stuff, right? Mm -hmm. We are giving away uh, watercolor kits to minimum. It depends on how many show up. If we get a lot of people showing up, we'll do some more. But for now, we're, we're on deck to uh, give away two watercolor kits complete with high quality watercolor. Uh, Faber and Castell and uh, some note cards. Um, 100 pound note cards. So it should be fun. Anyway, 
So what's a group of turkeys called? Um, a clutch, a rafter, a brood, or a gaggle? What's a group of turkeys called? Gaggle? Wow. Gaggle. Science jive turkeys. Um, gaggle was one guess. Yeah, because that's how they sound, that's for sure. Rafter. Oh, gaggle is for bees. Oh. All right. So, so if you see right here, I kind of forgot a branch. It's okay because I can just fill it in. But if I wanted to put it in, I would just line up everything like this and then, you know, just add that extra branch in. So, all right. Um, jump off into my. Now, do you guys have um, raw umber or brown or black? I, I forget what colors I put in my kids. I'm sorry. <laughs> Memory is terrible. Do you have brown? We have or, brown. brown and black. You have brown and, and black. black. OK, wonderful. Mm -hmm. All right. So what we're going to do next is, OK, so you got your, you got your exterior branch here. He's sitting on his branch now. Um, we can either do one of two things. We can go ahead and um, add some uh, white to his beak to get that first layer on. Let's do some white with a little yellow in it. And let's get his beak working so when we come back to it, um, it'll be ready uh, for a final coat. So I'm putting some yellow down. And I'm going to add uh, about 50-50 uh, white. So it's going to be like a pastel y kind of Easter white or yellow. What am I saying? Okay, so just wipe that palette knife off um, and then take up that number 12 brush, right? The round one. Make sure you're twirling your brush to you get that point back. Give me a little water in there. So we want the consistency of ink and not paste. You shouldn't have globs of paint on the end of your brush. And if you do, just twist it off. Just twist it off to see what's on the report. All right. And then let's go in there and give him his first coat of yellow. Oh, yeah. Which brush are you using? The 12. OK or the one with the round, you know, kind of pointed tip. Okay. So we're just putting this initial coat down because um, we know we're going to need more than one. Okay. So I'm rinsing that out. And actually, this is a good place. Uh, go from yellow to brown is a good transition. So um, let's go ahead and pick up our little pot of brown here. Wipe off that palette knife. And scoop some out. So I'm, of course, going to put my brown to the side. We always put our color to the side. And then we're going to divide this in half, OK? We're going to divide that brown in half. We're going to take half, and we're going to add some of our yellow to it. And we're going to add some white, mostly like, yeah, like 50 50 to this one section of brown. So we're going to have a light brown and a, and a dark brown. So that's the objective. For the branches, we got to have a light side that the sun hits. We got to have a dark side where the sun don't shine, right? So that's what we're missing right here, or that's what we're making right here is that. Um, where the sun is shining. So if you can look on my palette, what are you laughing about? Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, we're, we've got a chocolate, and then we've got like a milk chocolate is what we got going on, right? And so we can even add like a little bit more white off to the side, because let's have a third uh, shade of brown. Let's have a third one, because that's going to be where it's really lightest. So now you should have three shades of brown. So 
on your palette. So this is everybody with me in terms of mixing the color for the branches? Yes. Yes. Wonderful. Very good. Very good. All right. So I'm going to pick up that number 14 brush because now, um, actually, you know what? No, we're going to use the number 14. This is a number 14. This is a job for number 14 brush. <laughs> <laughs> right? So, yeah, that's what we're going to do. We're picking up uh, that 14 and uh, we're going for the darkest color and we're creating that uh, ink consistency. <clears throat> And we're gonna, this is what we're gonna draw our lines with. Then we're gonna go on top of those lines with the lighter colors, okay? But you gotta make this brush work for you, don't um, make yourself work so hard. All right, so here's my dark. And I'm starting here. And I just am angling, it's like almost a 45 degree angle. And my brush is a chisel now. And see how I just kind of touch it and move it? Man, that's a straight line. You didn't even have to work for it. So just lightly touch. Don't push down really hard. Just lightly touching. And then just turn the canvas. Make the, the canvas do the work. Don't you do the work. Turn the canvas when you get to places where you you know, you need a pivot. Just make the canvas pivot. Keep your hand right here. And I'm just kind of turning this brush a little bit that way and this way to get those colors in. Which fish, <laughs> which species of fish produces the most eggs? Is it the ocean sunfish, the squirrel fish, the red tooth triggerfish, or the salmon? Salmon. <laughs> What was that? Salmon. Salmon. Anybody else? All right. So I'm going to this little branch over here, too. I'm going to hit it with this darker color. And so let's just address this little area right here now. So I'm just going to keep. Now my branch is going to get thinner, so I'm putting less pressure. I'm like almost lifting the brush off the paper. It's not, it's barely touching the canvas. So it's better to put just a little bit of a line that's wrong down than too much of a line that's fat and you can't correct it unless you just erase the whole thing. It's the ocean sunfish. All right. And what did you guys guess? I know that was a delay reaction, right? <laughs> it was a salmon guess, right? Mm -hmm. All right. So now I'm going to go in and get my secondary color. I'm going to rinse this off while I'm over here. And I'm going to go get that secondary color. I'm taking most of that water out of my brush and picking up the secondary color. And all we're trying to do is to highlight the areas that the sun is hitting. So now your brush, this is the second layer. It's a little fatter. And here. And I think I'll go to the lightest layer now. I'm going to thin this out because I feel like it's not light enough. I'm going to take this lighter color and even add some more white to it. Which NFL team does not live or live, play in its home city? Is it um, the Cowboys, the Colts, the Patriots, or the Saints? Patriots. We got the Patriots. Who else? So now I'm with my lighter color right on top of that. Oh, I'm making a mess. Patriots, the answer is you switch. Cowboys. The Cowboys. Really? Mm -hmm. I guess they live in they don't live in Dallas. Or they don't play it out of Dallas. Oh, okay.
And so now I'm putting this lighter color next, right next to the darker color. So if you miss how to mix that, let me know. I'll mix it again. Don't worry about his little tootsies. We'll get those in there. Hmm. And so over here, like I'm gonna put some more light right here. So this is the top of that branch. So I'm gonna put some light on top of it. And then we can put some color here. Actually, you could go ahead and put your lighter color now. You want it to, and then right underneath that, then you hit it with your darker color. So when you do this with practice, sure it's frustrating the first time you do it. Sure it's going faster, and you wish you could take your time and slow down. Sure, it's like, but even artists, like it's like getting the time to do this and to put the practice in um, to get the results you want. It's Time is so precious, right? Hard to get time to do the love. So give yourself a break and just understand that the more you use the muscle, the creative the muscle, the creative muscle, the better it works for you. So if you don't like how your thing turns out, this time that means you need to do it more. <laughs> do more art. <laughs> What is the only edible food that never expires? Is it white rice, honey, rye, or barley? Which is the only food that never expires? White rice, honey, rye, or barley? Honey. Honey. <laughs> Boy, how do you guys know that? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Stop. Yeah. Okay, the pit, the kids be beat the adults. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, two out of two, right? Good job, you guys. Okay, so I'm getting my little blends right there. Then we get to do those um, evergreen branches. Close up. So yeah, just use that brush. What is the most popular game featured in books? Is it blackjack, checkers, chess, or poker? Which game is most featured in books? Chess. Checkers. Checkers or chess? chess. You only need one answer. <laughs> I kill. Yeah, chess checkers. Chess. If the answer is chess. <laughs> All right. So now no. I got this light color oh. down. We're gonna put some highlights. So go back to your lightest color. Let's put some highlights on these branches. I think my branches are wrong. That's it. So are they too fat for you? Uh, yeah, a little bit. You got a little happy with your 14, huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it takes practice to make straight lines. I, ch I try my best to help, help my, <laughs> my people through it, but it just takes practice. <laughs> Uh, that's why our tagline is time for art, because we feel like, you know, we're on a mission to give people permission uh -huh. to take time for it, you know, it's like, it's okay not to, like, maybe make a space, one corner of your room where you always can paint or do something that you enjoy with art. I have to make myself because I spend so much time on the business end, I rarely, I, when I get to pay with you guys, when I get to enjoy art. So, you know, it works out really well. <laughs> right? <laughs> All right. So I'm going to put some highlights over here too. 
some highlights over here. So the highlights go on top, you know that, right? Because the sun is the sun is coming from here, from this direction. So that's why uh, we're getting the sun on this side. So, and it doesn't have to be exact. It's just a little willy nilly. All right, what is the most popular holiday? Is it Mother's Day, uh, Easter, Christmas, or Thanksgiving? Which one? Christmas. It's the most popular holiday. Okay. Get into it a lot like Christmas. Did you guys see the Christmas Com Chronicles? You love it? I love it too. I love that movie. I more love Kurt Russell doing the Christmas song. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, old school. All right. Um, let's see. I am going to now pick up. I'm going to check in with you guys um, about how your painting is going. So if you don't mind, let's see what's cooking over there. Oh. Let's check in with you guys. Let's see. See? See? <laughs> oh, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. Oh, I can't see yours, Jackie. You got it down too low. Good job. Good job. Yes. Hey, Elf, how you doing up there? Elf is struggling, but that's okay. How are you struggling? Oh, Correct. yeah. Make Elf perfect. is terrible. Okay, so wait. It. We can't the background. See. Here, let me change the background. Yeah. Hold on. I gotta figure out. I forgot how I did this. That is nice. <laughs> Chris, you look like you got a little paint on your hands. <laughs> I'm usually. Yeah, I haven't really learned how to keep it off of myself, but. Uh... You know, some got on the canvas, so that's okay. <laughs> that's, what, that's all that matters. <laughs> yeah. So, Bob, you got to, uh, when we do the, oh, there you go. There you go. Yeah, I had to go over. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's good. It's, you know, it's your interpretation, it's just like mine. Yeah, well, I did. I, I had the blow dryer going on too quickly, and it streaked across the top above his beak, so I just tried to hide it. Mm -hmm. That's all you can do. You could even make some more branches going out in that direction to cover it up. So, uh, but you did a good job. Good job. All right. So, um, yeah, it looks like you got the, the shadow below the wing and all that. So, the next thing we're going to do is our little berries. Got to get those berries. Oh, let's do the eyes first. Let's do the eyes. All right. So, go ahead and make sure your brush is nice and wet. And I'm going to dip into my black and I'm tapping in some color. And I'm going around that little semicircle in his eye so that it has to shine. So I'm just going to leave that there. And actually, I'm going to put some white in my black so that it contrasts against his face. So I'm going to make a gray to go around this perimeter of his eye. So if you can see that, I took some white and I put it in my black. And I'm going to go around the perimeter of his eye so it doesn't, you know, blend into his little mask there. And then I'll put some black in there once it dries. And in the meantime, I'm going to go ahead and uh, separate the little area in his beak. Just using the tip of my brush, dipping it in some water so I get a nice consistency. So it's easy to spread the paint. Oops, that's still not liquid enough and there's too much paint on my brush. I'm going to dip that in. Okay, now we're going to get some good color. He's a sassy bird, making all kinds of noise in the morning. You just hear him. <laughs> oh. 
and then I'm going to erase. I'm going to show you how I erase again. So I'm not happy with my line on the bottom. So I rinse my uh, number 14 out and I'm going to just turn my canvas. I'm going to erase that. See that? So you can erase mistakes and I'm just wiping off the paint each time on my paper towel and dipping, cleaning my brush and then wiping it off on the paper towel. And that's how I could correct the mistake. There we go. And then I'll just put some more yellow on there. Okay, so back to our berries. Let's get those berries. I know you want to get those berries. All right. So we're going to use two colors for the berries. Which is the highest grossing Harry Potter film? Is it the Sorcerer's Stone, the Prisoner of Azkaban, the Goblet of Fire, or the Deathly Hallows? Which one? Deathly Hallows. Deathly Hallows. Jerry sounds like she's seen a Harry Potter movie or two. <laughs> <laughs> yep. She's like, like get up off the chair. <laughs> All right, Deathly Hallows. Deathly Hallows, good, good answer. All right, so now we're going in for the berry. So now when we paint the berries, they're not just red. Okay, they look red, but they're they're not just red. They're at least three colors of red and some like dark black red, right? So we're gonna mix, uh, let's do uh, three of those colors. We're gonna mix those three colors, all right? So I'm gonna divide my paint into three piles. I got three piles of red, right? To the one on the furthest left, on the right, I'm gonna rinse off my palette knife and I'm going to add some black. So that's gonna be my darkest red. Okay, I'm putting some uh, black down over here where my other black is. And I'm just gonna add about that much black to this red. So it's gonna be some black red. Okay, it's gonna be super dark. Okay, this is our first, this is our shadow color right here. Deepest shadow. Got to mix it in real good. So it's like dried up, it's like a dried up blood color. That's what it looks like. Dried up blood. Yeah, everybody needs to know how to mix dried up blood color. Okay, so there we go. We got our dried up blood right here. Next, we're going to mix some medium red. So we got our third pile right here. And I'm just going to add some white to it. Gonna add a little bit of white. So about that much. Of course, we always put it off to the side. And I'm going to add it to this little pile right here. So this is going to be our lightest white. See, that looks like berries now. Now it looks like cherry instead of bloody. All right, so there's one. And then, uh, yeah, let's just start with that. We'll just start with these three colors. So now we got um, cherry, and then we got strawberry, and then we got like, I don't know, ketchup color or something. Yeah, so let's pick up that number 12 brush. Make sure it's got a nice point. Let's get to work on those berries. So our first color, this is how this is going to work. We're going to go from this color to this color, and then probably here to white. But we're going to start with this one, go around the base of this cherry, then we're going to add some of this one, and then we're going to add some of the lighter color. Okay, We're going to blend those all together so we can get some real looking cherries. So I'm blending my, um, taking my number 12 brush and getting some color on there, and I'm going to go around the base of the berry first, just using the very tip of my brush and there's too much water in my brush. So I'm gonna take that right away, let my uh, paper towel drink out that excess water. So as you see a droplet of paint like that on your brush, stop, <laughs> okay, <laughs> don't continue. So I'm gonna take my other, my 14 brush and let it drink that excess water off my canvas. Okay, now let's try that again. So I'm going to go in and I put my darker color under the bottom. And I might as well do this one too. I'm going to go over here and do this one. 
And then I'm going to pick up some of the lighter color now. I'm going to wipe off the tip of my brush on my um, paper towel. And I'm just going to pick up some of my strawberry looking color. And I'm going to rub that into that color. And the same thing on the other side. And then finally, I'm going to go over to the white. Or here, I'm going to go all the way around. What am I doing? I'm going to go all the way around. And then we're going to just leave like a shine area. And then maybe I'll go in and pick up some of my pure red now. And touch my paper towel so I can drink out that excess water. And then now I'm going to, that's my middle color. Okay, we're just kind of leaving some uh, white on the berry so that it has like a reflective quality. And let's let that sit for a minute. And then just keep moving down your page. And again, I'm just rolling off the tip of my brush, the excess paint. You put too much paint in your brush, it's not gonna work because we're just using the very tip of the brush. You didn't know the branches were gonna be the hardest part, did you? Or the berries. <laughs> and then just tap that in. And then I'm going to go and pick up that strawberry looking color. And if it, if you get too much paint, just dip your paintbrush back in the water and get it to a liquid form. Like ink. It has to be like ink. I'm just the klutz today. What day is this? It must be an unlucky day. <laughs> no, it's December 11th. So anybody, any numerology people out there? <laughs> December 11th, 2020, what does that add up to? 12, 11, 12, uh, you know we can't add 23 and 20 is 43. So that's not a bad number. <laughs> what is going on today? Can't tell you how many times I tripped over something today. Don't leave the house, Cheryl. Okay, trivia question. All right, which artist sold the most albums in a single day? Was it Michael Jackson, Elvis, Beyonce, or Whitney Houston? Who? Michael Jackson. Got a Michael Jackson. Hee <laughs> hee. All right. <laughs> <laughs> and the answer is LBO. Elvis. Supposedly, it was the day after he died, he sold out all those albums. Well, and probably the only reason Michael didn't win was because we weren't selling albums then, right? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we were, because people are doing digital downloads these days, right? I mean, nobody buys albums anymore either. So I'm doing my second row of berries. And I'm just doing my little half circle like that for the darkest part, which is the part of the berry that doesn't hit the sun, right? So the next step is just the strawberry. And even though we have these three colors, what when we're done, it still looks red. How weird is that, right? You just use the very tip of your brush. What is the smallest state in the U.S.? Is it Connecticut, Maryland, Rhode Island, or Delaware? What's the smallest state in the U.S.? No guesses? Come on. Rhode Island. Rhode Island. There's a guess. Ding, 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 ding. Rhode Island it is. 
Okay, so when you're putting that color down, just blend those together. Kind of meld them together. And they don't have to be perfect. They're just like these abstract kind of um, berries in the wild. Okay, so we got berries there and then we got a couple down here, right? We got a couple down here. Let's make these darker. I want to use mostly that really dark paint that I have here. What is the most popular instrument in the U.S.? Is it the drums, the violin, mm -hmm. the guitar, or the drums? Piano. Who's the most popular one? We got a piano, guess. No more guesses? No, like I'm painting, I'm busy. Mm -hmm. The answer is piano. piano. All right, so I got my berry going here. I'm making these really dark berries. Then I'm going to pick up some of the red and maybe like uh, make them like these are the berries you want to eat off the tree right here. <laughs> these are going to be <laughs> delicious. Got that deep color. Just going to, you bite into it, juice is just going to go everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, and now I'm going towards my center. Oh, and my evergreen leaves. I gotta do my evergreen leaves. I gotta go back to my green palette. I'm gonna pick up some of this strawberry, or actually I need some white to make the highlight. And then if you want more intensity, like you feel like, um, you know, that your branches aren't popping enough, you can go in with another coat of uh, brown to give it more dimension. Uh, let's go ahead and get those little, get those little claws done. Let's do some claws. I'm using my number 12 brush and I'm going to probably just dip a little bit of black in there. And I'm just going to follow my little lines I have here and here. And then like a little mound of flesh right over those three little humps. And on the other side as well. Then you can darken those a little bit just by picking up that black color that we just created. And then put the shadow underneath the claw. Which actress was killed off in the opening scene of Scream? Was Drew it? Barrymore. <laughs> okay. <laughs> ding, 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 ding. <laughs> I don't know if that's right, but you sure <laughs> felt, <laughs> you felt <laughs> confident in that answer. <laughs> and the answer is, ah, yeah, Drew, Ma Drew Barrymore. Good job. Take it you're a horror picture person. No, I just remember the movie. Oh, you just remember, okay. Okay, cool. So I'm going to go in again and hey, I suggest that you stop for just a second and whip out your phone. Take a picture. 
You thought you were doing a bad job. You are going to feel so much better when you see your picture. So whip those phones out and take a picture of what you've done so far. Because you're always going to be more hard on yourself than the actual truth is. So always a good idea to stop and get another perspective. Which nut was used to make, is used to make dynamite? Is it almonds, pine nuts, peanuts, or walnuts? Which nut is used peanuts. to make? I don't even know that. Latoya said uh, peanuts. I don't know. <laughs> oh. All right. <laughs> right? Good guess. Oh my God. So if I ever get kidnapped, just grab some peanuts, <laughs> try to blast my way out. Yeah. <laughs> oh God. Okay, I forgot all about that. All right. right. Good. So now I feel like I want to, uh, what else do I need? Oh, my, my pine needles. Got to do my pine needles. Okay, so I'm going back to my, um, my tray. And so we're going to make some of this beautiful green that phthalo green and yellow make. So um, get your palette knife and uh, pick out a little yellow. And then let's take a little blue. You can make this as intense as you want. However, it complements your painting as you have it right now. So, just mix some green. Okay, so it's pretty easy to mix green with phthalo blue and yellow. It just pops right out there. I'm going to make it more of a wintry green, so I'm going to make mine darker, I think. Green's darker, wintry green. And we'll use our number 12 brush for this, so. Um, <laughs> so I'm going to go and get, I got my number 12 is nice and clean. It has enough water in it to help me get that inky consistency, right? And we're going to just do that flicking motion again to get our evergreen leaves. So just touch your brush to your paper towel on the edge. So make sure you don't have too much water and it, and then you're ready for your branches. So let's do a branch. So here's what we're doing, right? So let's pick this, uh, which branch? Let's do this branch right here. Okay. So we're just going to lay the brush down next to that um, piece of wood and just kind of make a straight line. And then lift the brush at the end of the line so it kind of comes to a point. Then we'll start at the base of it and just like flick some lines out like this. Very lightly with the tip of your brush. And then you can turn it over. And actually, that looks a little, I want it darker, more blue than green, because it's winter. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm putting some more water in my brush oh. to keep consistency and not paste. You, know, you don't want a glob of paint on the tip of your brush. You want a nice point. So twirl it between your thumb and forefinger to get that point. Then you're ready to go. Right? These lines don't look like that. <laughs> oh gosh. And then just light strokes. Yes, it takes practice. And even right there, you can see there's not enough liquid in my, or enough water in my brush to get that inconsistency. And if you don't have that inconsistency, you won't get that stroke. So there's one. <laughs> and the yeah. trivia question is, which popular Hollywood actor won the best Oscar award in 2016? Was it Johnny Depp, Leonardo DiCaprio, or Matt Damon? Who was it? Who walked away with the goat? Uh, no guesses? Leonardo? I don't know. Uh, I don't remember. <laughs> uh, 
And the answer is? Leonardo. Leonardo. All right. Do you know which movie? Uh, uh, the one where he was the, the Revenant. Mm-hmm. Yes. Uh-huh. I think it was it. Good mm-hmm. job. Yeah. All right. So I'm just going to take another branch. I'm just pulling that straight out, real lightweight on that brush. And then I'm just going to start making some little lines. So the trick to making these lines is just don't put a lot of pressure on your brush. Just barely touch your brush. And when you get to a point where you can't make a straight line, that means you don't have enough liquid. Stop. Dip your brush in some water. Pick up some more paint and twirl it back to that point again. You're not going to make these pointy lines if your brush isn't loaded with paint and water. Who wrote the songs for The Lion King? Was it Elton John, Phil Collins, Celine Dion, or Stevie Wonder? Who wrote the songs for The Lion King? Elton John. You feel the love. Gotta be Elton. Elton John. Elton John. (laughs) Right? Okay, same here. Let's see. Let's make these. Fat branches. So just with real light strokes, like you're just kissing the canvas with the strokes. So it's better not to make a line than to make a line that may be too thick. Yeah, mine is less. All right, and then uh, for this one right here, I think uh, I'll do another little branch out here. Oh, it was Snow White. <laughs> oh, what was the first Disney film that was produced in color? What Maddie said, or Carrie said, Snow White. The choices are Cinderella, Snow White, Sleeping Beauty, or Pocahontas. What would it be? Who was the <coughs> Okay, well, just one guess. And the answer, you're right, Snow White. Ding, 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 ding. All right, so same thing here, you guys, just light strokes around the. And don't feel bad if your strokes don't look like this. I've had a little practice. So once you practice a little bit more, and even if they are a little fat at the bottom, that's okay, too. Bob Ross says there's no mistakes, just happy accidents. All right, so I'm going to make it some strokes here. And then here as well. Which hip-hop duo use the line, shake it like a Polaroid picture? Is it the Goody Mob, okay. the Black Eyed Peas, Organized Noise, or Outcast? Outcast. Outcast. <laughs> Those were the little girls answering, right? <laughs> and the answer is Outcast. Right. All right, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna do a little piece out here. And I'm gonna add some more blue because that looks a little light. So if your green is too light, it's not contrasting against um, the piece. And just add a little bit more blue to it. And then just roll your brush back to get your point again. There we go, I like that a lot better. Which astrological sign is the water bearer? Is it Pisces, Aquarius, Cancer, or Virgo? Aquarius. (laughs) (laughs) Kind of sure of that answer. (laughs) Aquarius, yes. Aquarius, good job. 
All right. So I'm just going in now, and I'm not, you know, no particular pattern. <laughs> I'm not making any mistakes. No, not at all. Just keep going. Like Ellen DeGeneres in that one movie said, just keep spinning, spinning. <laughs> Dory. Finding Nemo. Finding Nemo, yes. <laughs> Finding Nemo. Those are my favorite kind of movies. The artistry of animation. Some of it is so real looking. You can't, it's hard to tell uh, it from real life motion. All right. So did you stop and take a picture? Did I suggest that to you guys yet? Yes. You did? Okay. What'd you think? Tell the truth. It was better than I, See? Better than I expected. Yeah, I'm not, it wasn't bad. Yeah. <laughs> See? You have some like, work to do. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> and that's My brand okay. <laughs> You know, it's like your first time painting probably in forever. And uh, yeah, you got to give yourself a little break. Like, hey. So Cheryl, our wrap up call was at six o'clock, but I had told Jill earlier that we probably wouldn't make it, but we're supposed to be done by 6.30. You'll be, you're done. Oh yeah, you're done. You're good. All you have to do now is like take a photograph. I want to take a group photograph um, with you guys so I can share it with you and whoever wants to see a group photo. So um, yeah, I could do that for you. We can wrap it up right that now. Picture? What's that? Oh what yeah. Picture? Here, let me get let me get the camera so I can take a group picture of everyone. And let's see. My leaves are not the best. <laughs> oh, <I know. laughs> oh look at some people put oh, different flowers. I love it. Here, let me get my camera close off. Okay, there we go. All right. Can we see? Oh, Hi. look at that. I like yeah. that. Good job, Bob. Chris? I stopped listening yeah. to you and just started using my inner child. And There you go. Out. And it worked <laughs> out perfectly. That's what happens. All right, Impressed, I got five Bob. pictures. I'm going to take one more. And then I, I like to do one of those uh, motion shots to share with share with you guys. So let me get it on that right uh, setting. Okay. So like TikTok, you guys, move around, move around. <laughs> Good job. All right. I got everyone. Wonderful. Okay. Well, thank you guys for being with us today. Um, I would love it if you follow us on Instagram. Um, Carrie, thanks for um, getting in touch with us. We loved having you guys today and we hope you keep in touch with us. We'll put all our social media uh, stuff out there. So if you're in the neighborhood, stop by. And Thank you. So Thanks. Much. It was really fun. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, Thank you so much. That was great. Oh, good. good. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Excellent. We did. All right, you guys. Thank you. You're welcome. Bye. 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 Oh, <laughs> my